In this video, we're going to create the color or albedo for the twigs. And so here in our section where we were creating the twigs height, we're going to start with these large patterns. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a gradient map. And then I'm going to come over here to where I have my two large twig shape patterns. And I'm going to take this first one here and I'm going to plug that into the gradient map input. And so we're going to end up colorizing this grayscale data just as we have been doing in previous videos. So here let's open up the gradient editor and I'm going to bring over some reference art and then I'm going to use my pick gradient and just sample a range of color. So for this one, I'm going to just try a range like this here. Okay, so uh, let me just move that reference out of the way and we'll close the gradient editor. And then here in the 2D view, you can see that this is the, the color that we have thus far. All right, so at this stage, the next thing I want to do, let's take a, let's just double click this input and you can see here that we also have, as part of our height information, some shapes that make up some moss. So I'm going to create uh, a levels node here and I'm going to use that to create a mass to isolate the moss areas. So I'm going to borrow this connection from the gradient input. So I'll hold down the control key, left click, and drag out the connection on, and then we'll plug that into the levels and then single left click to get rid of that extra connection line. So now I'll come over here to my levels histogram and take the input black and I'm just gonna move this towards the input white so that I can again, so that I can, as I said, isolate the areas that make up this moss. So we're gonna get something like this. Now I can use another gradient map. So here we'll choose another gradient. We'll plug this in and I can colorize this data as well. So here we'll open up the gradient editor. I'm gonna bring in my reference art, which is an image I found online through a search. And so we'll do a pick gradient. And then I'm just going to sample uh, just a range, just a color range that represents uh, the moss here in the reference art. So let's move this out of the way, close our gradient, and here's what I'm getting. So now I have uh, these two color maps that I need to combine. And we can do that pretty simply with just a blend node. So let's take uh, the moss gradient in the foreground and the first gradient we created, we'll place this in the background. And then we're just gonna blend these two guys together based on an opacity input, which in my case, I'm just gonna use this levels, which also can be used as a mask. So we'll plug this into the opacity. Now, when we take a look at our blend, you can see that I now have a composited color map for our moss and our color that for the twig uh, here in this blend node. And we can take this and we can apply this to all the twigs that's scattered across our ground using, once again, the shape color blend node. We can do that because the shape data that we're going to feed into this node also contains UV information, which can then match and place this texture on the appropriate twig shape. So we're going to create here the shape splatter blend color, and we're going to use two different pattern numbers. Now, uh, for our background, you can see this has a background color input. Let's go and grab uh, the, the very last shape color blend that we used, which was when we completed our rocks, and we're going to plug that into the background. Now, what we've created so far, we'll just say this is going to be the first pattern, so let's plug this into pattern one. Now, we also need our shape, uh, excuse me, our splatter data, one and two, and so we're going to grab that here from the section where we started to create our twigs. And remember, we're starting with the large, so we need uh, the splatter data from the shape splatter node. So I'm going to left click, let go of my left mouse button to bring out this connection line. And let's just navigate all the way over here to that node and then plug in this shape uh, splatter data. And here I just need to grab the second splatter data and we'll just plug it in here as well. So let me just grab out that connection line and we'll plug this in. Okay, so we're just about ready here. You can see that we've started to colorize some of these twigs here, but now we have the second pattern needs to be color as well, because right now it's just black, uh, and we have this pattern to input. So what I'm gonna do is just simply uh, take the nodes that I have so far, we'll just left click and drag to select all of them. I'll hit Control D to duplicate them, and uh, then I'm just going to replace here the shape input here to my levels, as well as this gradient map. So let's come back over to where we have uh, this here again is our twig shape. Remember the first, we, we worked with the first pattern and now we're gonna work on this second pattern here. So I'm just gonna left click out this connection line and let's place this here into the levels. And then again, I can borrow out this connection by holding down the control key, left click and drag, and then we'll plug that into the gradient. 
So now when we take a look, you can see that now we have, our, have successfully colored our two patterns. So here's the first one we did, here's the second one. You can see everything's matching up. Uh, however, the color's exactly the same. So for the second gradient map, we can just pick a new set of values from our reference. So let's open up the gradient editor. I'm gonna bring my reference art over and choose pick gradient once again. And this time I'll use uh, maybe, this, uh, maybe this area here. So we'll just sample this. And uh, let's move our reference out of the way, close our gradient editor. And now here's what we're getting. So uh, a completely different result that you see here. And if we take a look, you can see we also still have that moss. Uh, if we want, we can change this. Another thing that we could do is come over here to this gradient editor for this moss, and I can actually change some of these keys. Uh, so for example, let me just uh, remove out some of these keys. So I'm just left clicking on a key and just dragging upwards. And you can see I'm, I can start to remove some of this value here. And so now maybe uh, we can just move these keys around and you know change some of their values. So this one here you can see uh, is just kind of giving me a little bit more highlight on the edge. Uh, and then we'll come back maybe to this value and just you know change the color. So maybe this is a little bit more uh, of a green value. All right, so again, just kind of randomized the, the colors a bit, and then we'll plug the result of this new blend here for our pattern two into the pattern two input. And so we'll double click, uh, and you can see here we have two uh, different types of large twig shapes. Both of them have been uh, colored independently. So now we can just integrate uh, this, this result uh, we've been working on thus far into the base color input of our base material. And that'll allow us to visualize what we have here in our 3D view. So I'll make that connection now. And so here in our 3D view, I can start to see uh, the results here uh, of the work we've been doing so far. In order to make this texture pop just a little bit, I'm gonna add some highlights to the edges. Uh, so a way that we can do that is I'm going to use my high pass grayscale and I'm going to just go with the height uh, shape that I have. It's currently plugged into my levels. So I'm gonna hit the control key, left click and drag that to the high pass grayscale. Then uh, we'll take a look at the result here in our 2D view and then we are going to just uh, decrease the radius quite a bit. So I'm gonna get something that looks more like this. Okay, so uh, now I am going to uh, create a gradient map out of this. Uh, actually, what I could do, instead of using this levels here, just to uh, minimize the, the amount of nodes that I have, let's just run this directly through the gradient map since we need to convert this to color. So here, I'm gonna delete that levels. We'll open the gradient editor. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just start to uh, plot a few keys. So let's uh, come over here to the white value and uh, the white key here, and I can just lower its value down. So we'll get something like this. And uh, then I'm gonna click to create another key and just drag this here towards the middle. And so now we'll go back here to this first kind of gray key that we have here on the far right, and we'll increase the value a bit and so here, here is the effect that I'm getting. So like I said, instead of you know, using a levels and then passing that through, I can actually process the, the grayscale value ranges just using the gradient map editor here with just a few keys. All right, so uh, now that we have this in place, uh, let's just blend this. So we'll place uh, this highlight gradient map in the foreground and let's just place this blend here in the background. And for the blending mode, I'm gonna switch this to uh, screen. And so here is what we're getting. This is what we had before, and here's what we have after. So like I said, we're just kind of punching this texture up just a little bit here. Uh, okay, so I had this texture, looks like it was going into that pattern one input. So let's do the same thing here. We'll just plug that back in, and we'll look here in our 3D view, and uh, then, you know, I can, you know, take a look and see what I want to do. You know, maybe it's a little too intense. Uh, a couple things I could do would be to adjust the key, or I could come back over here to the blend mode and just drop its opacity here, something like that if I wanted to. So maybe, uh, let's leave it at uh, 0.75, so it's not, you know, super strong. And we could do the same thing uh, here for this uh, second shape that we had. So if I wanted to, I could just uh, simply just copy and paste uh, these nodes here and then just replace uh, the input to the high pass grayscale. Again, we're just processing it through that gradient map. And then we're just going to screen that using a blend node over top of the original blend shape, which gave us our color here. And so, like I said, we're gonna switch this to screen and probably put this at around 
and this is going to represent our uh, pattern input two. So here's what we had. Uh, so here's what we have for our two shapes. And uh, you know, looking at that, they they both look uh, you know a little probably too close in nature. So I'm gonna come over here to my gradient map. Uh, let's open up the gradient editor and maybe just pick a different range uh, from our reference. So we'll go into our pick gradient and just sample a different range here. And you can see that's just giving me some different results. And while this window's open, I can just kind of play around with some of these different ranges to see if I find something that I like uh, a bit better. All right, so I think I'll probably just go with this one here. And once again, we'll take a look. This is what we have here for that final texture. Okay, so uh, like I said, at this point, uh, we have done uh, the pattern shape here for the large. Uh, we still need to do uh, the small shapes. So I'm not actually going to you know, cover that here in this video since it's going to be the exact same process that we did here. So once that's done, we will have our entire color completed, and then we're going to go into a material blending process.